Hey, we're live! Hey, precious and beautiful people! I'm here! I made it again! We got the uh, red live square. I'm ready, but it's disappeared again. Hey, there we are back. Did it that last week too. Hey, there's my alarm. Hello. That's telling me that it's uh, snoozed for 15 minutes and it was time to be sitting here at 5 till. Uh, it took a little bit longer to get things prepared again tonight, so I'm a little bit over 8. Sorry about that. It looks like 10 minutes. Uh, I have seemed like a, quite a bit covered tonight. The first thing the Holy Spirit wants me to do is pray. Now don't judge me because I got a hat on and I'm not taking it off. This hat says I got victory. And it's for a reason tonight. Because I'm a little nervous. There's uh, an issue going on in my uh, uh, ministry right now in my life where, where I've been attacked. And, you know, I've had to draw back and keep my mouth shut and only pay attention to the Spirit. And so, uh, you know, uh, that's made me a little nervous. And so the Holy Spirit wants me to pray, so don't judge me because I don't take my hat off. Uh, Jesus dealt with me a long time ago. I am a prophet as Jeremiah was. Uh, I was born a prophet. Uh, God reserved me to be a prophet. Uh, it's in Jeremiah chapter 1. And as you noticed in the prophets, he will have them, God had them do things. Uh, they would wear things or they would go places and do dig, dig holes and put something in a hole. And God would prophesy something about what they've done uh, to the people. And it's about the people of the future. So this is, uh, Jesus said, people are going to judge you. I want them judge you because that shows you who is of the law and who is not now i'm gonna get in i got a lot of teaching to do and i'm so anxious to get to it but my Bible as I declared two weeks ago so uh, I'm going to calm myself down with some prayer and then uh, go down the list of what I have to teach about tonight Father, I come before your throne tonight. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm a little nervous. Uh, you know the battle has been going on lately, but the battle is not mine. The battle belongs to you. So. Help me to calm down. Uh, help me to you know do whatever I need to do to calm down. The Lord is my shepherd. I do not want nor lack. He has made me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. The Lord leads us. Me on paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, because he is with me. His rod and staff, they comfort me. Most high in the shadow of him. have a spirit of fear I have a spirit of power and love and sound mind 
Now produce fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. Mm. Father, let your word go to the people tonight. That's what we're talking about is your word. I love your word. Your word carries power. It's the sword of the Lord. I don't have to worry about it. I just need to quote it because why? Only the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Only the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Did you hear that? But we overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. And the spoken word of our testimony. Don't you mess with me, devil. Spirit spoke to me something, something to me today. He said, <laughs> made me laugh. It was funny. He said, <laughs> he said, it's so difficult to get past the pea brains of the people with the grain of a mustard seed. The faith grain of a mustard seed, he said. It's so difficult. Everybody wants to control. They don't want to surrender. That's what it takes to follow Jesus. Everything. Surrender. Father, I bring your word tonight. It looks like I bring the anointing because it's not me. I pray I can put these eyeglasses back on. I forgot my rag to wipe my eyes. I need an angel to get that. I got my water tonight. Praise the Lord. Thank you for this prayer. Thank you, Jesus. You said we ask the Father anything in your name, and it shall be granted. Why? To bring glory to the Father. So I'm not sitting here to bring glory to me. I'm, I'm nervous as a polecat. But I got the word. I got it in my heart. Lord is a shield and buckler to me. Psalm 91. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to be here. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here. Uh, help me to calm down and be a gentleman and find me something to wipe my eyes with. But I don't have one, so. Uh, so sorry. Okay. Here we go. All right. Talking about my favorite subject tonight. The Word. The Holy Bible. This is a lie. I went over that last week, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. I got my list right here. It's a lie. But I've only chosen uh, some things to talk about. That's one of them, a lie. You find that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I'm not turning to every scripture tonight. I have a lot. And I want to get done before the alarm goes off at 8.55. Uh, I'm getting a little trying. I'm working to get a little bit more organized here. Having my stuff organized. But getting on time at 8. Is, 8 o'clock is coming. Uh, 10 minutes late. But the Lord spoke to me a long time ago. He said, hey, you're never late. You're always right on time. Don't worry about it. Sorry, I'm going to get drank. No, it's not the drink. Okay, so the one thing I forgot that brings it alive is the anointing. And uh, so the word is alive and we're going to show it through the anointing of this beautiful song. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, credit and uh, use Rhea's song again, uh, Miss Rhea Sell. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to use it one more time. I think it has such an anointing on it. Wow. Okay. Let me 
get to. Come here, mouse. Where you at? All right. Uh, while this plays, again, this time I'm going to go get a. that breaks the yoke that's straight out of the Bible uh, if you have listened to me very much you know that the word comes out of my mouth left and right if you want to say I, I don't brag I don't care I make my boast in the Lord because as David stood before Goliath that's how he did it he boasted in the Lord he didn't boast in himself he was a little old scrawny guy he was going up big old giant this guy nine foot over his little what, five, six, five foot, I think he was. Good looking. His good looks didn't do him any good. God did him good. So, uh, I love the word. Uh, I can hint on it by, you know, Jesus that uh, I've been able to learn as much of the word as I know. Uh, it's only because of him that my eyes are open to the word. And Jesus said, can't, nobody, can't, can't anybody come to the Father unless they come through me. And then in another place he says, uh, they can't see unless I open their eyes. I can prove by the road to, the. I forget the name of the road anyway. Uh, he, he's already dead, he, he resurrects, and these two are walking down the road to Emmaus, I think. The road to Emmaus, I'm not sure. So anyway, Jesus disappears next to him. He's walking with them. Where'd he come from? So, you know, they're talking with him. They don't even know who he is. Jesus, he just died. He resurrected from the dead. And he's walking down the road with these two supposedly disciples. I don't know who they are. But anyway, he's talking with them. 
And so he goes down the road, and they get down the road, and they invite him in to their place. And Jesus goes in. He's sitting with them. They still don't know who he is. And so then he says their eyes, the Bible says their eyes were opened, and he left. And they knew who he was then. So Jesus opens our spiritual eyes. Okay, that's part of what I'm going to cover tonight. Um, so we had the music. I talk about this book is alive, Hebrews chapter Four, verse 12 I'm not very good with the books and numbers and we'll stop that now I'm not very good with the books and numbers uh, but I do know the word uh, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God so in the beginning all the way back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 where it says uh, God created heaven and earth and then you jump over to John chapter 1 and it says John chapter 1 says that uh, uh, tells you that he is the word he is the word and then John chapter 1 verse 14 says the word became flesh and lived among us okay so that's Jesus boom right in there how did he get to an existence with the word he got into existence with the word of God okay God started it God started it he prophesied Jesus in Genesis chapter, what? Three. Three. Genesis chapter three. Says. He's on down here and he says, I will put enmity between you. It's verse 15. You and the woman. And between your seed and her seed. That's uh, Jesus and the devil. And he shall bruise you on the head, and you shall bruise him on the heel. So uh, Jesus went to hell, made a spectacle of the devil, and bruised him on his head. But the devil got at him and uh, shoved a spear in his side, you know, but that's okay. Uh, when it was all over with, it was finished. Uh, how was it finished? Prophesied through the word. God started it. How did... And, and check this out. Did you know that Adam and Eve, when Eve was deceived first and then ate of the fruit and she gave to her husband and he ate, he sinned. Then they, their eyes were open. Chapter 3, Genesis chapter 3. And they saw they were naked. Ah! So, they hid themselves, right? So they, the, the wife, Eve, did what her job was to do. She sewed together some fig leaves and covered themselves, right? So they're trying to cover their sin now. They know God's coming. God's coming in the garden. He came every day in the garden before. He's coming. He's coming to talk to them. But they can't so see him now. They can't show themselves to him now because why? They sin. Now, get a look at this, all right? And watch this. <clears throat> watch this now. Uh, they made the tunics of leaves to cover fig leaves to cover themselves, right? So here comes God. He made atonement right here genesis have you seen it look now the man verse 20 of chapter 3 verse 20 genesis chapter 3 verse 20 now the man called the wife's name eve because she was the mother of all the living not the dead 21, verse 21, the Lord God made garments of what? Skin. Skin. Where did he get the skin? Now, wait a minute. God didn't take no fig leaves and cover this. He said, wait, I got to take care of this now. So he took a garment of skin for Adam and his wife and clothed them. What did he clothe them in? Sheep skin. The only thing perfect through the whole Bible is the sheep. 
Jesus is the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation of the world. That's scripture. Google it. Before the foundation of the world. Not after. Not here. It was before. Okay, so that's the word. That started the prophecy of Jesus. Okay, then you come into all the prophets. You know, they're called the minor little prophets for some reason. They were prophesying Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53 should be the most famous in your mind. Isaiah 53, I think. Wait a minute, my mind's trying to tell me 51, but we've got to find out, aren't we? Because that's what we do. We go find out. We love the Word. We want to see it. What's going on here? Then we go 50 or 51, so it's not 51. It's 53. Yeah. Now we're talking about Jesus. Now, Prophet Isaiah is talking about Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Before we ever even got to the first book of the New Testament... Matthew's not here yet, but we're talking about Jesus. Hallelujah. We're talking about Jesus. First one. Who has believed our message? Are you believing my message tonight? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Verse 2. For he, Jesus, grew up before him, God, like a tender shoot. Just a little tender plant. Jesus grew up before God as a tender shoot. Did you know that? Alright. Now. This is talking about Jesus. Verse 2 still. And like a root out of parched ground. Do you know what parched ground is? It's dry. Hasn't had water for a while. It's parched. It's very dry. He come out of dry ground. He has no stately form. He's not beautiful like David. He has no beautiful look. He's not stately. He's not got big muscles. Well, he probably had muscles. He had to carry some lumber because he was a carpenter. Uh, here we go. Uh, verse 2. He, or majesty. He wasn't. He left his majesty in heaven. Remember, he told uh, Mary, "Don't touch me. I still got to go uh, back and uh, honor the Father with all this stuff." Can you imagine Jesus appeared to you first before everyone went up there and said, "Father, I'm done. Let me put my blood on there for everybody." And Mary, "Don't touch me, Mary. I haven't approached Father yet." So you understand that? Anyway, verse two. Uh, he had no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him. Nothing that we should notice that he's, you know, brilliant. He's not, he don't look like a, uh, you know, a three-piece suited businessman with a briefcase. So, no appearance that we should attract, uh, be attracted to him. No appearance, he had no appearance that we would be attracted to Jesus. So, verse 3. He was despised and forsaken of men. This is Isaiah talking about Jesus way before. It's way back. This is way back. So anyway, uh, he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. Why? Why? Why was Jesus this way? Does anybody care that Jesus was that way? Why was he that way? And like one from whom men hide their face, he was despised. And we did not esteem him. The king of glory. And we didn't esteem him. Who didn't esteem him? The Pharisees. The religious people. Religious people. Anyway, verse 4. This gets good though. It gets good. Verse 4, Isaiah 53, the prophet, he's speaking what God has already spoken. Surely our griefs, Jesus himself, 
Boar. He took them. He took our griefs. And our sorrows he carried. Remember when he carried the cross, the timber up there, up the hill? One of the Gospels says that uh, another guy had to come and take the cross from him. They show it in some movie somewhere. I think uh, maybe the famous uh, Passion of the Cross. Maybe I have, it's been so long since I've seen it. I don't remember how that worked out. But there was a man that came and uh, took the cross from Jesus because they just kept whooping him and whipping him and whipping him and he couldn't carry the cross anymore. So he had to have help. So, yet we ourselves esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Boy, they thought he was a sinner, wasn't he? Boy, the Pharisees were, boy, they was hollering, Crucify him! Crucify him! He done did wrong! He did this wrong! Did that wrong! They tell a bunch of lies. It wasn't the truth there. They even tried to get somebody to come in and tell a lie. For what? What did he do? Tell the truth? He told the truth. Told the truth. That's all he did was tell the truth. Okay. Verse 4. He's the of God and afflicted. Verse 5. But he pierced through for our transgression. He was pierced through for our transgressions, our sins. He was pierced. Remember his side? Remember he told Timothy, Hey, you don't believe me. Stick your hand in here. This is the hole. This is the hole that the blood came out of when they speared me. See it? I'm a, I love that story. I'm going to teach that story too. Anyway. Sorry, I need a drink. I'm sorry. No, it's water. I'm serious. Anyway, I'm just messing with you. Um, verse 5, he was pierced through for our transgressions. But he was pierced. But here we are. We consider him stricken. He's a bad man now. But he was pierced for us. He was crushed. For our iniquities. He was crushed. Up going up the hill to Calvary. For our iniquity. Crushed. Does anybody care? Not many. Not many. I don't want to say that. We'll say it anyway. He says, some of y'all is off over rambling about the flesh all the time. About what the devil's doing. What... What, what this good car breaking down, what medicine you got to take, and what blah, 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 all that. When All you need is the Word. All you need is the Word. That's it. I've proved this Word so many times. I can't tell you how many times I've proved this Word. Proved it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14 proved it. That works now in my life. Do you know, verse, do you know Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 14? You should. I'm going to get into that. How much time do I got? I got 30 minutes. All right. I just got to, I just want to, I just want to talk about Jesus for a minute. I want to connect this, you, to this book, okay? God started the prophecy. Isaiah's carrying it through, okay? There's many more prophets talk about him. Talk about his beginning, his ending, the middle, everything. Daniel talks about the ending when he comes and crushes the feet of the clay. Yeah, that's Jesus. Boom! Coming from the east. Ain't nobody gonna stop Jesus. Why? Because we got victory. That's why. He was crushed for our iniquities. Verse 5. The chastening. The chastening. That's beating. That's beating. Yeah, the chastening. I believe that's it. For our well-being fell upon him. Our beating was upon him. Why? Why? Why did Jesus do this for us? The book tells us. The word tells us. All right. He was crushed. He was chastened. He was scourged. Here's the beating. Okay, chastened. Chastened. I'm trying to think about chastened. I can't right now. Holy Spirit, sorry. I got to move on. And by his scourging, we are healed. What? Jesus took a beating so we could be healed? No. You know, I've heard people tell me, I've told them what this book says over and over and over again, and they say, I just can't accept it. Well, no wonder. If you don't accept it, that's when we're going, we're moving on now. So, okay, I want to 
we go from alive to why is it alive? This book is prophecy for Jesus. We're prophesying Jesus, just like I just did. You can turn to the last book and prophesy when he's coming back. Isn't that fun? That's just fun. That's fun to me. I love it. I love being open to the back and say, look at Jesus coming with that fire in his eyes. He got the sword in his mouth and he's going to put the devil, the false prophet, and and the other one in the... Oh, he's going to put them in hell. And then, he's going to slay all of them that have taken the mark of the beast. As far as I'm going with that statement, until later. So, it all takes... I'm not going to show you Revelation. I've showed you Genesis. We've got to start. So, now Isaiah has come. Jesus is going to go through what he's going to go through. For us. Not for him. It's for us and God. His Father. Because we, God created us. The Father created us to be in fellowship with him. But Adam dropped the ball. Okay. Sorry, Adam dropped the ball. But I already proved to you right here with the word that God took care of it in the garden that day. With the garments of skin. He took off the fig leaves. He said, here, let me take care of that. That ain't covering nothing. I don't take care of anything. Let me do it. So he did it. And then Jesus prophesied. All through the book. You can find Jesus in every book. I've heard a little boy on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, I guess. He, just, he goes down through there saying he's singing what Jesus is in every book. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I like to know. I don't know every, I don't know every part of who Jesus is in every book. Some of it. I hope I'm not hollering too loud. Please forgive me. Okay, I'm just excited. I love the word. Oh, I love the word. Okay, we got through five, his scourging, he was beaten, remember the beating he took, almost to death, so we could be healed. Now, let me explain something about that. In the old Roman uh, system, you, you'll read about Paul, he took, it'll say, 40 lashes minus one. Well, that's 39 lashes, because they pretty much, if they beat a man, 40 lashes He's going to die. And they didn't want him to die. Any man. This is every scourging. They, it was 39 lashes. Uh, for some reason. It's just I don't know if they proved it that way. I don't know if statistics did that. I don't know if somebody was in there with a stone pad with his finger. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> a scourging was 39 lashes. So Jesus took a scourging for our healing. And it works in a lot of areas. Well, every area, of course. Okay. Verse 6. All of us like sheep have gone astray. We all went astray. Each of us have turned to his own way. Ouch. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all... To fall on him, Jesus. Now that word Lord is capitalized, all of it. And that means the big, the big, the big dude. You know, the big, all of them together. God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. As God. Now I know a lot of people don't believe in the Trinity. I don't care. I believe in the Trinity. And I can explain the Trinity. Maybe that you can understand it. Even with Scripture. Even with Scripture. Because I know God. He was my Father first. He didn't let me know Jesus for years. I only knew Him as Father. It was it. He ripped my heart out. Sometimes I was so angry with my Father, I could spit fire. I'm telling you, there was twice in my life. 
And one of them was, one of them is coming up on Halloween night at about 12.30 in the morning. I was sitting in a hospital room mad as H-E double hockey sticks. Because my first child was born on Halloween. And boy, what a, you may not want to, I, I posted, you may not want to tune in to that one. That's coming up uh, on Halloween week. And I'm supposed to give my testimony. And I don't like giving my testimony. Because it makes me cry. So let's get back to talking about Jesus. I was talking about Jesus. Uh, his gener uh, by oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living? For the transgression of my people, to whom the stroke was due. To the stroke was due. The stroke was due on us. Jesus took it. Oh, I love teaching about Jesus. All right, let's move on. All right. And that's why it's the good news. That's why we're teaching the good news. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. I went over it two weeks ago. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 says what? Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation. The power of God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God to salvation. You can be saved through this book. Go and go through that. Moving on. All right. That's the end of that note. See you. Uh, you yeah, okay. Okay, we're going to believe it. Okay. Why am we going to believe it? Because Jesus, I'm going to look this one up because everybody should know this one. Uh, the Holy Spirit wants me to tell a little joke about a pastor here in a moment, so y'all get ready. I don't like jokes, but he said tell it, so it's, it's not bad. Don't see your mind's going off again. Anyway, uh, we finished about Jesus. We're going to roll over here to uh, believe in it at John, the fourth gospel of the Bible. John, chapter 3, verse 16. Oh, y'all should know that one. Let's hurry. Oh, who can get there first? Let's see. Ah, I'm almost there. Ah! I, don't, I know there's one out there probably trying to beat me in Miss Katera. Yeehaw! I got it. I'm there. John chapter 3, are y'all there? John, are y'all there? John chapter 3, verse 16. Famous verse, very famous verse. For God so loved the world. That's a whole lot of people. That he gave. Wait a minute, he gave. He gave. He gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. Why did he give his only begotten son? Why? Because Adam sinned, and there was nobody else that could take care of the job. No other man now. No other man. I'll teach that later. Very, very good teaching there. Uh, all right. Where he only, the only he, he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. It's not in the verse. Don't worry. I just like saying Jesus. There's power in the name. I'm telling you. There's power in the name. Demons trembling. Uh, that whosoever, whoever believes in him, Jesus, shall not perish, but have eternal life. We don't have to perish. All we got to do is believe what Jesus did. All right. Got through the believe it. Now, ah, the joke. All right. All right. All right. There was this pastor. He was a new pastor. He started at this congregation and he walked up to the pulpit. On his first Sunday, sorry, I keep dropping. Thank you. Uh, the, and so, <laughs> anyway, he was well, he he started his first Sunday, and he said, "Everybody, open up to John three sixteen. And so he opened it up and he read it, and then he sat down. And the next Sunday, he got up and opened his Bible to uh, John three sixteen. He said, "Everybody, open your Bibles to John three sixteen, and he read it, and he sat down. And he got up again the third Sunday. He opened his Bible to John 3.16. He said, open your Bible to John 3.16. And he read it. And he said, when y'all get it, I'll move on. And he sat down. Ha! That wasn't much of a joke. But anyway, uh, it's kind of like, you know, that's the way it is. Believe is the very, I, I don't, I, that is the biggest word. I believe it is for people to get 
get to knowing and doing is believing. A lot of people know what the book says, but they're not believing what the book says. So they're not doing what James says and walking and doing what the Word says. And when you don't walk and do what the Word says, you don't have what Ephesians chapter 6 says, the sword. You don't have your sword, which is the Spirit, the Word. All right. That's the joke. And then, to reiterate believing it, uh, let's turn to Romans chapter 10, very famous scripture, book of Romans, to the, to the right for me, I don't know what for you, but anyway, Romans, before Corinthians, backing up, Romans chapter 10, very famous, should be very famous words. I don't think they get preached about enough, because I see a lot of people, they're not believing when the word is nigh you, in your mouth, wait. Faith means to believe. That's all it means is to believe. Really. That's it. It's so simple. Okay. I jumped up a verse. Stop. Okay. But the righteousness based on faith speaks. Speaks. As follows. Do not say in your heart. Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Who's going to go up and get him? Nobody. He can't. Only the Word. The Word prophesied him here. Verse 7. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the, from the dead. Nobody. Nobody could but the power of the Holy Spirit. By God the Father. So, Verse 8. But what does it say? Uh-oh, I got five minutes. I may have to make a third part on this. Uh-oh. I don't really have five minutes. I got like 15. All right. So, snooze. Thank you. My nose is itching. Quit. All right. Romans chapter 10. The word is near you. The word is near you. In your mouth. That is the word of faith. Which we are preaching. Which I am preaching. I am preaching faith right now. I've been preaching faith the whole moment I opened up about talking about the word. Okay, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth, now we're speaking it, we're speaking the word, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord, hallelujah, he is my Lord. Jesus has been my Lord for a while, whenever the Father decided to let me be introduced to Jesus, for real. I, you know, I'm still waiting for my third appearance from him, but uh, I've seen Jesus in the Spirit twice. And he appeared to me twice. And as we go along, I hope to get to tell those stories because it's very powerful to me, I know for sure. Anyway, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart, believe in your heart. There's that word believe again. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. That God raised him from the dead. What? I thought there was only Jesus. I thought Jesus was God alone. Well, yeah, he was. But somebody had to raise him from the dead, didn't they? Anyway, <clears throat> moving on. A little poke at the Trinity there. I know. I, did you know the group that the Holy Spirit began through me, Jesus, Jim's? Did you know 
There was a guy in there, I made him admin, bless his heart. He challenged me on a uh, Trinity uh, post that I posted, long post. I took a lot of time to do that post, and he sent me a private message, challenged me on it. And I was like, well, I, I don't know, I just give you the truth. And, and, but he didn't want the truth, he wanted to argue. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you, I'm sorry. And you know, he unfriended me and left the group, and I guess blocked me, I don't know, I haven't checked, I don't know. So anyway, uh, verse uh, 9 that if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, what's going to happen if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead? What's going to happen? You will be saved! Hallelujah! You will be saved! Now, there's a will there. The word will there is very important because that is future because Jesus said, those who endure to the end shall be saved. So this is just cutting a little bit short there. All right. So if you believe in your heart, speak it with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. Okay. All right. All right. Ooh, I got a little bit. All right. Uh, speak it. We're going to use it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, I got back up. Sorry. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> We're going to speak it. Because... I've been prophesying, I've been prophesying Jesus all along here. So then we turn to Hebrews chapter 10. Well, I'm going on 10s. Romans 10. Going, now we're going to Hebrews 10. I like that. All right, Hebrews. Back, oh, going this way. It's such a small book, you can miss it so easy. There we go, Hebrews 10. 10, 10. 19 through 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 23. I read this two weeks ago, but it's so good, I'm going to read it again. 19. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is his flesh, the body, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, Jesus, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. You got to be fully assured. Uh, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. Did you know our hearts have been sprinkled clean from an evil conscience? All you got to do is believe it. What are we doing here? We're believing it and speaking it now. We're speaking. I'm just speaking. All right. Speaking from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water our bodies have been washed with pure water why because we believe it verse 23 let us hold fast let us hold fast let us hold fast hey quick thinking a light a light jesus is a light anyway hold fast to what let us verse 23 of Hebrews chapter 10, let us hold fast the confession. That means what we are speaking. That means the faith we are speaking. Romans chapter 10, remember? Faith is in our mouths. Okay, let us hold fast the confession of our hope. What are we hoping for? We're hoping to be saved. Right? So we keep saying it. We keep saying, Jesus has saved me. Praise the Lord. I'm so thankful for Jesus. He saved me. People don't get excited about that. I work with 10 people. And there's not a one of them excited about Jesus. Not one. Sad. I can count more probably. I think there's like 14 there. But ain't nobody, nobody excited about Jesus. They're all looking at what they're doing. Oh, they're all living for themselves. Woo. All right, 23. Let us hope past the confession of our hope without wavering. That means you don't waver. You don't, well, I don't know. Uh, are you sure the word is true? Are you sure the word, you sure we're saved by the word? Are you sure, you sure Jesus went to the cross? You sure, you sure, you sure? What if? What if? What if? What if? Stop. Anyway, uh, verse 23. Without wavering. For he who promised, who promised, who promised God is faithful. He is faithful. 
Hallelujah, he's faithful. Hallelujah. All we can do is hold fast to confession our faith. All right, we speak it. Now, there is a very wonderful pastor that uh, the Holy Spirit led me to to actually teach me what I am teaching you now. 22 years ago this past June. 22 years ago, I began listening to Joe, uh, Billy Joe Darty. If you know Billy Joe Darty out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, he was on the radio. Uh, I don't know if you caught the radio station, but Billy Joe Darty, precious man of God, he knew what he was talking about, and he walked in it with power. I've seen him, I've seen miracles through his hands. I've seen people fall out in the spirit. Uh-oh! I done busted somebody's bubble there because some of you don't believe in that, do you? I do. I've seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, uh, yeah, I uh, was was in the Billy Joe Darty Church in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the second largest church, second largest church in Tulsa. And so uh, I was an usher two years. I ushered two years <clears throat> every Wednesday uh, and Sunday, sometimes three services on Sunday. And then the big crusades that would come through. I've seen, uh, I've seen the big names. I've seen the big names like uh, I've seen uh, Pastor Benny Hinn. Bless you, brother. You are a man, 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 and man of God. Love you, brother. You are wonderful. Thank you so much for your service to the Lord. I don't give a whoop. I don't care what the hecklers say about you. You are a man of God. I don't know if you're gonna see this or not, but if you do, keep going. Keep going. Keep the keep the confession of your faith going. You are strong, brother. Keep going. Anyway, uh, being here, Joyce Meyer. I've seen Joyce Meyer. Uh, I've seen uh, oh, what's his name? I loved him and his wife. Anyway, I've seen big names, uh, you know, names that you people uh, uh, judge. You people judge these people, and yeah, some of them may, you know, may have fallen off a little bit. Some of them may have fallen off into the, uh, you know, the falling away part that Thessalonians talks about. There's a falling away that's happening right now. People of the faith are falling away. They're not believing anymore. They're falling away. And they don't believe because they've been going so long and so strong and they don't take the time to rejuvenate themselves and do what the Bible says. The word says, he who waits on the Lord shall renew his strength. That ought, that ought to be in your mouth a lot. Anyway, moving on. My alarm hasn't went off yet. Great. All right. Speak it. Billy Joe Darty got me started on speaking it. Okay. So what, what I did 22 years ago, I took cards, index cards, and I started writing out scriptures of confession of my faith, what I believed. I had an index card stack bigger than that, and I read it every day. I didn't care how long it took. I read it every day. <clears throat> you know, later in life, I got a little bit smarter, you know, and I got a little bit, you know, out of the, out of the kind of, you know, the, the stupid stage of being, you know, a young, snot-nosed child of God. I went through it pretty heavy. I thought I was, you know, he did a lot for me, and I thought maybe I was somebody. I had a little problem with self righteousness. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry about that. I had to confess that. Anyway, I don't have that problem anymore. Praise the Lord Jesus. So, I took cards, I made out confessions. I don't have time to confess these, so, <sighs> we're going to have part three next time. Because my alarm, oh, I got, I got four minutes. Yeah, that's right. Just right on. Okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna stop right there, and next time I'm gonna carry on with this. This is very important. <clears throat> if you listen to what I tell you and do what I tell you, you'll get. To knowing God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit and walking in the power. Yeah. Um, I knew for a long time. I knew. I knew. I knew probably 17 years ago. God started talking to me. Uh, actually, when the Benny Hinn came, the Crusade came for Benny Hinn. Uh, I guess uh, the Holy Spirit wants me to talk about that a little bit because that was a very powerful moment for me. 
Uh, I was an usher. I ushered. I've been ushering for a while. I don't know how long I was ushering. <clears throat> and being an usher <clears throat> in that church was very serious. They had a system for everything. <clears throat> if a problem broke out, well, you got 1,500 people in a, in a session. I mean, you know, in a crusade, we're talking a lot of people. So you got to have a system. So they even had six guys would come around you. If you were causing a problem and they needed to ex uh, excavate you, six guys would come to you. And if they had to, they was carrying you out. That was how serious this was because the spirit is serious. The spirit makes you take care of business. Now, Billy Joe Darty was the, the pastor of this church, right? And I was there at this. I didn't. I never knew Benny Hinn. I didn't never meet the guy. I didn't know how much power he had. I didn't know how much power God uh, allowed him to carry for the healings. You think those healings are uh, uh, fake? No, they're not. No, they're not. You better quit blaspheming the Holy Spirit or you're going to find out you're not going up there. Don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm telling you, that's serious business with God. God loves his spirit, obviously. And he loves us because he gave us his spirit. So, I'm at this crusade, right? And, you know, I don't get a sign down on the floor like sometimes with, you know, uh, the pastor. Sometimes I'd be on the floor ushering. Sometimes they need us to come behind people because people fell out. I mean, they just, they just, I don't know what, they, I don't know how else to explain it. They just go, and if you're not there to catch them, they're going to hit the floor, I've seen it. I don't know how many times I've seen it. Seen it. Seen it. That stuff's not fake. Okay. Uh, Spirit, he's wanting to animate that. Uh, get, he, he wants to iterate that. It's not fake. Okay. Now. So I'm here. I get. Guess where I get stationed? In the balcony. Yeah. I'm in the balcony. I can't get nowhere near Benny Hinn. Why not? I want to meet Benny Hinn. I want to shake his hand. Well, because the guy's carrying so much power, he'd probably knock me back to the end of the balcony if I shook his hand. And you don't understand that power until you've seen it. I've seen it. I'm fixing to tell you about it right now. Okay, so here I am. I'm here. I'm, I'm at this crusade. I'm in the I'm balcony, and the, and the music starts. The worship music starts. The singing starts an hour before. Benny Hinn comes on the stage. Benny Hinn don't even come when the music starts. He don't introduce the singers. They just start. Very important key about the spirit there. They just start. They just know when to start. Because they walk in unity. Oh, how wonderful it is for the oil to flow down the beard of Aaron as they dwell in unity. Anyway, um... So I'm in the balcony, I'm watching my post, I'm up here standing, uh oh, there's my hour, yup. Uh, well, we're going to take a little bit of time, I'm right there, I'm right there, I'm right there, I'm right there, alright. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go over a little bit over, and then I'll end. Uh, anyway, so I'm in the balcony, I'm watching my post, and what my job is to do is watch people, uh, you know, if anybody needs help, directions, if they need, uh, you know, when we pass the offering plate, uh, the bucket, they don't offer a plate, they have a bucket, they pass the bucket I I help collect the buckets I don't I've only been in the back room once and seen all the bucket deal going on when they empty all the money out uh, one time I got to see that and so I'm up in the balcony there's a railing across the balcony y'all know that uh, at any balcony there is and I'm standing at this balcony and the anointing is so strong in the balcony it's lifting me off of my feet I can't hold myself on the floor without holding on to this railing. I'm up on my tippy toes and this thing's going, I'm thinking this rail could come off of my hand. I don't know what would have happened if I didn't hold on to that rail, but that anointing was so strong, it was like, wow! What is going on here? I didn't know. I was a young snot-nosed kid in the Lord. I don't like kid. Uh, not no boy, I guess I could say, because the kid is a goat's child, not a God's child. Anyway, I don't like that word. Anyway, so I'm standing here. I'm like, wow, what do I got to do? I mean, that's all I can do to hold myself down on the ground. And I'm thinking, wow. So anyway, that's when I was introduced to the power, and I knew that I had the power in me. Very important factor there, in me at that time 
Why? I'll get into that next time. All right, we're going to pray. Uh, Father, thank you so much for allowing me to come forth with your word. Thank you for helping me to calm down and the anointing to flow. And the devil's on the go. Because he done got his head stomped. and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you go read it google it i believe it's 10 19 luke chapter 10 verse 19 if you know your bible you know luke chapter 10 verse 19 very powerful verse very you need that you need that on a, a card you need confessing that every day all right thank you father for allowing the word to go forth i pray somebody got something out of it I pray somebody uh, is out there just joyfully rejoicing because they know their sins are forgiven. They know they have power. They knew it all along, Father. But you've been teaching them. You've been teaching them through fires and, and trials and been going through this. And they've been going, what's going on? You say, I got power, but it's not working. And you've been teaching them how to be humble because the power comes in meat. Okay, if you're not meek, you're not going to carry the power. Now, thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing us. You're the example. That's what the Word says about you, Jesus. You are our example. <clears throat> thank you for being our example. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus said in, your word, in the Word that you would be our helper. He would send you to us and you would be our helper. All we need to do is believe it. Just believe it. Just believe it. Just believe it. Anyway, <clears throat> Holy Spirit, thank you for being here. You make so much. You make this so much fun. I, I just love talking to you. You know, that's just it's just great. You know, and, and I know some of the people's going what. But anyway, thank you, thank you, Father. Okay, I'm gonna move on, and I'm gonna hit this button without looking at it, so I can say I love you. See you next time. Bye.